So this morning I posted a poll as to what video we should film next and I asked you guys between what drone should I get, which is a question that I get a lot after I post drone photos or videos, which I've been doing this week, and what wide angle lens would we recommend? Fair warning, this video might be a little bit longer than usual just because I wanted to bring you guys a little bit more options, not just this is what we shoot with and that's the end all. I want you guys to see other options as to what fits in your budget and what is also the best for the type of photography that you do. With that being said, I know that a lot of you that follow us on Instagram uh, see that we post a lot of wide angle photos with a lot of colors and a lot of pop and a lot of sky. And that kind of has become our signature look. I think that a lot of the photos that draw the attention of our clients and our couples and everybody is the photos that have a lot going on, but you can still draw your eye to the subject, which is usually the people that we're shooting. Now we do use a lot of off-camera lighting and that's how we get the attention to go to the brightest portion of the frame, which would be people. With that being said, here are some options that we recommend for wide angle lens choices. What we mostly use them for is for photos where we want to get a lot of the scenery, but also want to get the people in the frame. So the point of our photos, how I like to look at it is I want it to be a landscape photo that you happen to be in that you would be proud to print out and hang on your wall. So it looks like a cool landscape and then there we are, it's us in the corner. So that's kind of the idea behind those photos. You can also use super wide angle lenses for things like architecture. Uh, just be careful with the bending of the corners. I'm not going to go into that too much because that's a whole nother video. You can also use it for when you travel to get really wide areas of the Grand Canyon or things like that. And so it's just a nice lens to have in your kit. And with so many options now, you can pretty much pick up. I mean, there are, when I was doing research for this, there were a ton. I had to narrow it down to full frame cameras because that's what we use. But if you want to get, and I'll explain actually why I went with full frame throughout this video. So the lens that I use, and I think most of our shooters use, I know when we first started putting TNK photo together, they they pretty much got the same lenses and then everybody's just kind of scattered through different brands. Uh, so I don't know if Sony, I have to check, I'm pretty sure they do, make this lens. The lens that I've been using for the last five or six years has been this big guy. And as you can see, it's not in perfect condition anymore because we use them. I don't baby my equipment, I do use it you know, how it's supposed to be used. I don't beat on it though, you know, like I still respect that it's a tool that lets me do my job. But this guy over here is a pretty robust lens. It is the Tokina 16 to 2.8. It's a few years old, but it still does tremendous quality work. You can see some of the photos that are scrolling through your screen right now, and all of these were shot with the Tokina 16 to 28. Some of them we used off-camera lighting, some of them we didn't, but you can see that they're very sharp. It does exaggerate some things, so you kind of have to be aware of that, and it does stretch. I'm gonna elaborate on that right now. So some of the pros of this lens are it's cheaper than its name brand counterparts. So the Sony, Nikon, Canon equivalent are gonna be about twice or three times the price. The build quality I will say is on par with any lens that I've played with. I used to have the Nikon 14 to 24 2.8 and that lens is about 16, $1,700 and it got stolen. That's why I don't have it anymore. That's a vlog for another day why you should have insurance. And I didn't have insurance at the time, so don't think I'm being a smart ass. It's how I learned my lesson. So we'll talk about that later. So the Nikon version is like about three times the price. This one's about $600. And as far as sharpness, I would say they're pretty much on par. I mean, don't expect any lens wide open to be sharp in the corners. It's just not going to be, especially lenses like these. The This lens at 2.8, it's going to be a little bit soft around the corners. But the thing is, I would never shoot a portrait or people in a frame with them being in the corner because one, it's going to stretch them out too much. And two, it's going to be a lot softer. So more likely than not, that's why you see a lot of the photos that I posted. The composition is with the heads somewhere closer to the center of the frame because one, it's going to be a lot sharper and two, it's going to not distort as much. So you, when you use a wide angle lens, you do have to be very aware of what this lens will do. Now it is a full frame lens. So if you have it on a crap sensor camera and then you step up to a full frame camera eventually, it's gonna work on your next camera, which is great. It's basically future proofing it. So that is definitely in the pros category. In the cons category, like I said, it's not gonna be as sharp in the corners as it is in the center. And this one doesn't have any type of image stabilization. Now, I know that a lot of you guys shoot with mirrorless cameras. So a lot of those mirrorless cameras have 
stabilization inside the body, which is wonderful. But at the same time, in my opinion, if you're shooting at 16 millimeters, you should be able to handhold that son of a bitch and it should not, I mean, you really tuck your elbows in, hold your breath, and if you don't know to do that, I mean, I learned it from a book, actually, that snipers hold their breath when they shoot and that's why it stops that little motion. So I hold my breath, I tuck my elbows in, and at 16 millimeters, I can shoot something at a tenth of a second pretty easily, especially if I'm using flash with rear sync. That was a lot, so don't worry if you didn't catch it all. Send me a message if you have any questions. So that will freeze your subject. So I don't really think that vibration reduction or IS or whatever, VR, VC, whatever the company calls it, is really as necessary, but this lens doesn't have it. There are a few lenses that do, just to not make this video super, super long, I'm gonna rifle through some lenses that I saw that were that would be basically options to this lens. All right, so if you're a Canon shooter, the 16 to 35, 2.8, the version three, which is the newest one, runs about $2,000. So I'll, I'll put all these links on the bottom too. So you have that option. The 16 to 35 Canon, F4, so you're not getting the 2.8 constant anymore, is about $1,000, $999. If you're a Nikon shooter, you have the option of the 14 to 24 2.8, which is nice because it's 2.8 constant, doesn't have vibration reduction, or you can get the Nikon 16 to 35 f4, which does have vibration reduction, and that one's about $1,100. If you want to go off brand, so Tamron has the 15 to 30 millimeter 2.8, and it does have image stabilization and vibration reduction stabilization. I'm going to call that from now on just so we don't have to keep going through all of them. So that one's about $1,100. You can get the Tokina 16 to 28, which is the one that I have. It's a 2.8, no stabilization. And that's about $600. I think a little bit less than that. So I hope I didn't lose you. Those are some of the options that you can get for super wide angle lenses. I'm gonna link all of them below so you can see and compare which one makes the most sense to you. I'm gonna be 100% honest. When I got the Tokina 16 to 28, I got it because I had just gotten my stuff stolen and that wasn't fun. It was about $7,000 worth of stuff that got stolen and I had to restart my entire kit. So I didn't have that much money and I figured, okay, what can I get that's gonna give me good quality, but I'm not gonna be spending another two grand. Cause I think at the time the 14 to 24 was about 1900 or 2000 cause it was a lot newer. And I ended up finding this just by chance. I was searching and I'm like, okay, this looks pretty good. I went and I checked it out at the camera store because I always like to feel the build quality of it. And I mean, I was sold. I knew what the 14 to 24 felt like and I just couldn't justify that the 14 to 24 would be three or four times the price when I can get something that's almost identical for a lot less. So I tried it out. I was going to see if it, if it did its job and I've had it ever since. I've actually never sent this thing to get serviced in the entire time I've had it. And like I said, I, I do not baby it and it has been fantastic. So if you don't wanna spend a ton of money, get a really sharp, nice, affordable, super wide angle lens, get you one of these. And if you wanna spend a little bit more and you wanna get stabilization in the lens and slightly newer optics, cause this is a little bit older, you can, there's plenty of options. So it really depends on how much you wanna spend, but those would be my recommendations as to the super wide angles that I think would work. I hope that answered any questions that you guys may have had. If not, leave a comment below. I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. If you wanna see any other kind of content, let me know and I will be happy to film it.